So in today's video, I will show you why you should stop cherry picking MSK studies from your working list. So what is cherry picking? So if you are working in a risk system which has a common reading list or work list, or you share your reading list with somebody else, then you will probably have noticed that sometimes the top study, like the old study that is uh, about to be get reported, is commonly like a very old spine MRI or even like an MR and a CT combined in a 90 year old, or it's something rare and unusual like MRI of a shark of food or something like that. And so what cherry picking is, is basically this study keeps on top and people just pick studies that are newer and are easier to read like a MRI of a 20 year old knee or something like an MRI of a spine in a 19 year old, uh, something like that. So the difficult studies kind of like stays on top. Hi, my name is Dr. Christoph Acton and in my YouTube channel I teach you MSK radiology. Now if you like the stuff that I do here then make sure you subscribe and also hit the bell notification button there so you get an email every time I upload a new video which is about once a week. Now why do people actually do cherry picking and there are many reasons so for example if you are in a system where you have to read a lot of studies then it's may be beneficial for you if you read three MR knees instead of one MRI of the whole spine or one MRI of the lumbar spine, which was uh, like several times uh, operated on with infection and stuff like that, because it takes a lot of time to read that one single study. Now, uh, one other reason might be that you're not very familiar with the topic, like it's a rare disease, uh, it's something that you only rarely see like shark of foot MRI is not something that all the MSK radiologists get to see so many times. So people just skip over that study and pick the next one. Another reason might be that you genuinely just like to look at nice looking organs or studies and not really fancy these kind of like degenerated stuff, which is not so easy to see for the eye uh, sometimes. And another reason is also if you are in a system where you get reimbursed per study, then it might be even more beneficial for you to read three studies instead of one. But ultimately, the reason why people skip studies is it's there is some discomfort, there is a lack of confidence, a lack of speed. It's kind of like these two topics that uh, are the actual reasons why people skip all the studies. And more often than not, it's pr probably just because uh, there's a lack of confidence ultimately. What happens if you do actually cherry picking is the following. You start to get to see these difficult studies even less than you did before since they are also not really common anyways. So for example if you have a difficult MRI of the foot like a shark of foot or so, if you skip over that study all the time you will never see one and the less you see the less confident you are in reading these studies anyways and you might occasionally get to see one in an MDT meeting and then you're suddenly like facing this question oh why is, is it now active or not or which stadium or which grade it is and stuff like that and you never really took the time during your normal reporting days to deep dive there so you will not be able to answer the question which creates an additional feeling of discomfort and uh, insecurity and next time you see a short course study on your list then you know okay I'm not gonna touch this one okay so this kind of like a vicious cycle that's continuing running um, or like if you will like a self-fulfilling prophecy. The reason why you should actually uh, pick those studies and just keep with you know don't cherry pick just go with the timeline just pick the older study that's uh, about to report it or whatever system you have if maybe it's a you know like a priority system or something but never cherry pick just pick the next study on your list and then what will happen and you will notice this if you do this continuously that you will start to see these rare studies more often than not because you're not skipping them anymore and some of your colleagues might still do it might still do it and what happens then is you build up a little bit of experience and uh, you start reading about these diseases and you get faster and faster and you're feeling more and more confident over time. It might take some time depending on the kind of studies that you are reading but uh, ultimately what's going to happen is you will build up uh, a security, you will feel more comfortable in reading these studies and certainly you will increase your knowledge and so there was one people or there was one person saying at, at once um, that if you are feeling uncomfortable it's regarded as a sign of growth or like a personal growth or whatever kind of growth and I think there is something uh, to that so 
When you are reading a study and you are not feeling very confident, it means that there is potential to grow, but you just have to act on it, upon it, and really start reading about the stuff. And it takes time, okay? But uh, yeah, but it's not only knowledge. So you can read stuff about uh, diseases and pathologies, and you will get better this way. But if you are, are having a study of a, I don't know, 90-year-old old patient, several surgeries, post-infection, uh, maybe some additional anomalies and stuff. It will take really a long time and there's not much knowledge that you're missing. It's just not very pleasant to look at. You have to be very like systematic in your approach, but that's another skill you can learn. You can start learning a systematic approach for all your old spines. You go through the different levels and stuff. And by that, you suddenly start to see that the ugly spine is not so much different from a, let's say, 20 year old spine. It's just a different, you know, the feeling you have or the approach you have towards the study that's probably the most uh, causing or issue causing factor. So if you have a systematic approach towards even these difficult studies, you will get better at them. You will either improve your knowledge by reading about it or you will improve your, your workflow, your search patterns and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, you just need to know how to approach these kind of studies then. But this is kind of like the message today. Don't cherry pick. It's a bad habit. Uh, everybody did it. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, don't do it. It's much, much better for you. So that's it for this week. And if you want to know more about stuff like that, where it's more about workflow and efficiency, then you find more information in my book, Speed MSK Radiology, how to report more MSK studies faster. And this book is available on Amazon for, I think it's $19 or something. So go check it out. It has excellent reviews. And not only that, it's, uh, I'm quite proud of that it's the only radiology book with just one image and this is this simple graph there so go check it out if you don't have it already and see you next time so before you move on to the next video i want you to briefly reflect on how much benefit you get out of my videos here how much of the stuff that i'm teaching you can you actually apply in clinical routine if you get something out of it then you could consider to become a patron of my youtube channel Patreon is an online platform where people can support other content creators just like me. You can find the link over here and click there right now. Now, there are other options as well. If you really want to go to your next level in MSK, then you can consider to join the Virtual MSK Radiology Fellowship. You find the link down here and also in the description of this video. The Virtual MSK Fellowship is a one-on-one -on -one case based teaching program where I help radiologists to get to their next level by increasing their speed and especially confidence in MSK reporting. So go check that one out.